Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about types of triangles. Very common triangles that you're going to meet in various math problems. The first type we're going to talk about is called an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle has all sides equal. That's what that word means, equilateral, equal sides. And all angles are equal. And furthermore, all angles are 60 degrees. So it's important to remember that we don't necessarily know the length of the sides of an of a equilateral triangle, but they are all the same. So those little marks tell us the sides are the same. And that we do know that all the angles are the same and that all the angles are 60. So we specifically know every angle in an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. So equilateral. Okay, let's move that off to the side and talk about the next type of triangle. The next type is called an isosceles triangle. I'll write that here. Isosceles. And I drew two of them because they can come in different shapes. The important thing to know about isosceles triangles is that two of the sides are the same and two of the angles are the same. And you'll notice it's these two angles which are called base angles. So this first isosceles triangle is kind of a tall one and then here's another isosceles triangle that's a little shorter or kind of flattened out, but in both cases, two sides equal, two angles equal. And I could also say, instead of the sides being equal, I could say sides are congruent. And I could also say that angles are congruent, right? And that applies, of course, to the equilateral as well. So I'll just write that word down here too. Congruent just means, in the case of sides, same length, in the case of angles, same measure. All right, let's look at a third kind of triangle. The third kind is called a right triangle. I'll write that up here, a right triangle. And it's called that because it has a right angle. Right angle is 90 degrees. Ninety degrees. We could also say that these two sides that that angle is formed by are perpendicular. Now a right triangle will always have its longest side opposite that right angle. And that side is called the hypotenuse. It's often designated with the letter C. So that long side is always called the hypotenuse. And the two shorter sides are often called legs, and they're often labeled with the letters A and B. So those are the legs. And there's a particular relationship between the lengths of the legs and the hypotenuse in a right triangle, and it's only true for right triangles, none of these other ones. And that relationship is called the Pythagorean theorem, and it says that the square of one leg plus the square of the other leg will always equal the square of the hypotenuse. So remember, don't try to apply this Pythagorean theorem to any of these other triangles. It only works for right triangles. All right, let's jump in and do a few examples. Here's a right triangle. Forgot my little square there. Let's say we knew that this side was two, this side was three, and we wanted to know what this side was. So it's important to realize that the unknown side in this case is the hypotenuse. So we can use that Pythagorean theorem where A and B are the legs and C refers to the hypotenuse. We can plug in what we know. We know one of the legs is two, one of the legs is three, and we can try to solve for C. Two squared is four, three squared is nine, and we get c squared equals 13, and if I just switch that around, I'll just write it this way, and then square root both sides, 
and I'm going to leave that just as the square root of 13. So we just discovered that this is the square root of 13. Now notice that this is what we call an irrational number. You would have to use a calculator to get a decimal approximation. That is almost always going to be what happens if you just pick random numbers, like I just picked a 2 and a 3. The third side is usually going to come out to be a radical like that. But there are a few sort of, quote, magic numbers, and they're called Pythagorean triples, where all three sides come out to be integers. There's not many, but there's a few, and they're really good to know. So let's do an example where we get a Pythagorean triple. Say this right triangle had a hypotenuse of 5, and one of its legs was 4, and we wanted to know the length of the other leg. Now this time it's the leg that's uh, the unknown value as opposed to hypotenuse. So if we write the Pythagorean theorem and remember that A and B are always legs, we can say that some unknown leg, we'll call this A this time, plus the other leg which is 4 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so a squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Now let's just do some math here. Subtract a 16 from both sides. And now when we take the square root of both sides, we get a 3. Nice integer. So a equals 3. So this is one of those triangles where all sides are integers. And this, in fact, has a name. It's called the 3, 4, 5, right triangle. Now it's good to know something more about 3, 4, 5 triangles. I'll move that down here. And that is that any multiple of these will also be a Pythagorean triple. So if I wanted to multiply all these numbers by say 2, I would get 6, 8, 10. That's also a uh, the dimensions of a right triangle. So any multiple of these numbers, I could multiply by 8 if I wanted to and get 24, 32, 40, will work out in the Pythagorean theorem. But 3, 4, 5 is like the basic Pythagorean triple. Then there are a few other Pythagorean triples not based off 3, 4, 5. I'll write 3, 4, 5 again here. Some other ones are 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and 8, 15, 17. And again, any multiples of these will also be Pythagorean triples, just like the multiples over here of the 3, 4, 5 are Pythagorean triples. All right, so that means if you were given a triangle and you were told one leg was 5 and the hypotenuse was 13, so let's just rewrite this triangle up here. So we have a hypotenuse of 13, and one of the legs is 5. And you wanted to know what the third leg was. If you memorized your Pythagorean triples, you would not have to go over and use this formula. You would just know, oh, 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. This has to be 12. Okay, so three kinds of triangles. Equilateral triangle, all sides equal, and all angles equal, and all angles equal to 60. Isosceles triangle, two sides equal, and two base angles equal. Right triangles have a right angle in them. The longest side is the hypotenuse. The other two sides are called the legs, and a squared plus b squared equals c squared leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And then also really good to know your Pythagorean triples to speed up some of your problems. Okay, see you in the next video.